uh, it's great to see that they love having Australians a part of the collegiate system. Good. We're ready. So all set. Ready to go. It's game two. And the FIBA World Cup. Underway at Marvel Stadium. And with Miles Turner doing the jump against Aaron Baines. And the USA control the tip. They work to the right of your screen. This is smart. Left alone. It's the lob pass out wide. Cross now for Harrison Barnes. He elevates and comes up with the first points inside 20 seconds. Well, again, a nice mid-range jumper this time by Harrison Barnes. That's just the closeout, trying to take away the middle penetration. Need to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball uh, in order for the defense to have a what you would say, Case, a bit more starch. This is Joe Ingalls, wraparound play. Baines, penetration, down low, off glass, can't convert. And Barnes is there for the rebound. Rushes back up the floor. Marcus Smart in support. Fires quickly and gets it done as well. They've scored the first five after scoring the first six in game one. Well, you have a look at that. Marcus Smart didn't even play in game one. Comes off, just goes bang from the land of plenty. We need Daly to get fired up. And Landau with the offensive rebound doesn't have the same athleticism, but good timing and in the right spot. It's, and uh, Ham, I reckon the key to this one as well is going to be Joe Ingalls. He's been a little bit down with his shot. Numbers aren't great. If Australia's going to be competitive, need to get a lot more out of Joe Ingalls. I'd like to see him get going early as the United States just come out on fire. Well, they've opened up a six point lead here. Barnes scored five of their eight. Smart, the only other scorer. They love the ball inside Landale, shares it now, Baines got a good look at it, nice off the hand, he comes up with Australia's first triple. Well that's an area that his game has really developed over the last couple of years in the NBA, no problem at all for the corner three. Oh they are unconscious at the moment, the United States, that's four of four, including three straight from deep. They have got all the answers. Baines inside Landau. The pass wasn't great, so he was able to knock it down. Delavadova fires. Great job, Landau, to keep that alive with the offensive rebound. Now Joe Ingalls. Shot clock to single digits. Ingalls penetration. Baines, where well, he's bumped. On the floor is the call from the referee. And Jock Landau continues to impress. And that's where Joe Ingalls is at his best on that pick and roll. This is that offensive rebound tucks that in nicely but the more on ball screens Joe Ingalls can get himself in the more good things are going to happen for his teammate he is a quality passer with that sort of length really good vision Drewy spot on and he uses his size and uh, his passing ability is absolutely elite as well as his perimeter shooting One here. Dale look he is great effort on the offensive glass and uh, just word coming in that Kuzma won't take any part of the game. I'm a little disappointed. I've liked his work with the peroxide. And I've liked his work from the land of plenty as well. Just so smooth with that release. Beautiful tempo of the game at which he plays at. This is Mitchell. Oh, they force him into error. Great hands from Paddy Mills there off the dribble against Donovan Mitchell. We know how potent he is. 20, I tell you, 24 points a game last year. <laughs> he was fantastic. Exceptional. And uh, Good signs early on. A little bit more motion, a little bit more ball movement we're seeing from the Australian team the first couple of minutes. Delivered over for Mills. Shot clock works to 10 once more. Mills almost at the halfway line. USA by four. Almost three minutes played. Opening quarter action. Mills works into the paint. Fall away. Nice finish. His first score in the game. That's just an NBA move with the point guard being able to find his spot. Similar to what the United States have been doing to Australia. Almost identical that time with Paddy Mills in the middle on ball. Well, this has been an incredible effort to find ourselves only two points down when they're four from four, four from five from the field, the USA. Miles Turner misfires. This is Ingalls. Well, Landau again paints and spicy. He throws it down on the USA. And just, as, just as out of your mouth, uh, Hammer, we see uh, the, the, the passing and Landale finding the right spots. And nice dive action and great pass. Six unanswered points from the Boomers here. They've got some defence to play here. Free throws to come now for Team USA. Paddy Mills, he's with the ball. and just does it. Cuts his defender off to create that space. And Turner wasn't able to get up. And look at Joe Ingalls. That size, vision and smarts to find Landale. Good start by 
Jock Landau, I like his energy. Well, this is an area now with the United States at the free throw line. Probably one of the rare areas that they were beaten by Australia. They only got nine free throw attempts for the entire game. Australia got themselves to the line 21 times. 16 of 21, Australia was the other night from the free throw line. Donovan Mitchell. Sometimes those numbers with free throws also are a reflection, perhaps, of the aggressiveness of the defense of Australia as well. Well, that's a good start from Australia as Bain jumps upstairs to throw it down. And I think Andre Lamanis has channeled you, uh, your coaching thoughts, putting Joe Ingalls in another on-ball situation. Thank you. Finally, that's where we want to see him because he will serve it up on a platter like we've seen the last two possessions. Middleton fires. It's all the bottom of the net for him as well. Five of six from the field. The USA lead by two. The Aussies five of eight. Has a good 63% clip of their own. This is Della Vadova. Good screen from Baines. Just goes exploring with a drill. Picks it up now. Baines inside. Good position. Flips it over the top. And he's fouled and going to the free throw line. Aaron Baines again working down low, but on this occasion it's the on-ball screen. Beautiful pass and good bounce from the big fella. Not a lot of runway to work with, but was able to elevate and tuck it in. Joe Ingalls already has got the three assists. Go, play. 8.6 rebounds in 20 minutes in game one for Baines. And for a good free throw shooter, it hasn't been his strength in this series. Seven years in the NBA, more than 400 games. Boston are now on his way to Phoenix. Makes the adjustment, gets the back end there. So it's a one point ball game. It took over four minutes played. Term number one. Smart picks up the dribble, hands over. Middleton. Back to Smart. Got it by Ingles. Shot clock works to single numbers here. He puts it on the floor, smart. They move it around through sets of hands. Get the look they were after. Can't convert. Della Dover in a rush for Australia. Landau working hard up the floor. Baines gets it from Mills. He goes back in that direction. Mills looking for the penetration now. Find some space. Landau arcs up the three. It's off the mark. Baines the tip in. Couldn't get it to work. And now it's off to the races with Donovan Mitchell. Decides to go solo. And it was a good option as Mitchell comes up with his first field goal. That's how tough they are. That was good defensive transition from the Boomers. But just not good enough because Mitchell just pulls up it on a dime in transition. And goes bang. Look at this. Just got too deep, didn't he? You saw... Delivered over on his heels. He was there in position. More concerned about the play on the rim, but the stop and pop caught him off guard as the big fella Andrew Bogan checks in. Drewy, the possession before, we saw a little half court trap and back into a zone. I like that from Andre Lamanis. He's going to have to have a few tricks up his sleeve come the World Cup. Working hard for Bogan. And eventually it came back to him, and the bogeyman comes up with his first score. And timeout called here, a little less than five minutes to come in the first term. They're trying to ring the alarm bells and say, well, who can play at this level for the longest? And clearly that would favour the depth of the United States team. So a high scoring affair. And I think tempo control is going to be vital for Australia. And if it continues this way, you'd have to say the advantage will go to the USA. Both teams with four scorers so far. Middleton gets a good look, can't convert. Mason Plumley, the offensive rebound. Got another opportunity for Team USA. Aussie's doing well in the offensive glass at the moment, 4-1. Here's Walker, who checks into the game. It has an immediate impact and opens his account. Well, that was a great contest from Andrew Bogut, but just better offense from the United States. They know how to make tough shots individually. Bogut, nice pass inside. Mills can't convert. Plumley gets it out quickly, and Kemba Walker, confronted by Della Vadova, loses the handle, has to go back and retrieve it. Now some contact, no whistle. Walker goes on with it, and why not when you can finish like that? He's not bashful. He's coming in a very aggressive mode. And again, a couple of mid-range jumpers. Matty Delavadova didn't do a lot wrong. Double. On the hip. Double dribble. Double dribble is called on. Matty, I didn't quite see it. Have a look at Gemba Walker when he comes off those screen. That time there's good help. And I think they're the types of shots that Andre Lamanis has declared that he's going to have to live with. Those mid-range contested one. Here it is, a hint of an offensive foul. And again, Walker just creates that separation. And that's enough 
for a couple of uh, nothing but the bottom of the net shots by Kemba Walker. Well, he may have just looked over at Pop and said, you're bringing off the bench, you're kidding, aren't you? Here's a couple of little buckets for you straight away. The USA, eight on the shot clock. Need to get busy. This man can do that. Tatum fires. Can't connect and Bogut the rebound. A little bit going on between Bogut and Plumley as well. We'll keep a close eye on that. Three and a half left here. Opening quarter action from Melbourne. Mills pass. What's well, off the mark? And they couldn't reel it in. And Bogut's going to pick up the foul there. And did well to disguise that. He was in front. He reached in. The concern about Paddy Mills and. Jock Landale is just concerned about what happened down the other end. Paddy tried to, the entry pass, but they were claiming that Jock Landale got pushed in the back, and that's why he couldn't catch it. Well, the positive thing about this start for Australia is only two points between Mills, Ingalls, and Della Vadova, and we've got 16 points on the board. So pretty good start considering some of our stars haven't been able to score early. So a chance for the USA to come forward. Kemba Walker was going solo at the moment. And look at that finish. He's now up to seven in the game, including three and three from the field and a game-high eight-point lead. And this is the danger for Australia. You can't give up 24 points seven minutes into the first quarter. We're on a 7-0 run here, Team USA, as Ingles works into the corner. Catch and shoot came from that man, Chris Golding, and he picks up where he left off in game one. That was against a contested hand as well, that baseline. Oh, he's doing it at the defensive end as well. How about that from Golding? But well, they need to contain this man, Kimball Walker. He is. He scored the last seven for the United States. And again, another beautiful stroke he's got. And Chris Golding in the corner. Great pass. Again, really good vision. Chris Golding coming off a career game for Australia. And he stays hot. And Joe Ingalls, four assists out of a team total of six. Here is Ingalls. Picks up the dribble, needs help. Back to Mills with seven on the shot clock for the Boomers. Mills elects to fire from deep. It's short. Landed in the lap there of Joe Harris, who grabs it and hands over now. A chance for Jason Tatum. Bounce pass, Plumley mishandled it. Need to reset here. And this man can reset before a blink of an eye. This time he's off the mark. Well, he had to miss a shot sooner or later, Kimber Walker. Golding into the corner. Mills working baseline. Ingalls wide open. Can't complete it. Great job there from Jalen Brown to bring that down and win the rebound for USA. Rebound count 8 6 Australia so far. Harris. Relieved of possession. And now Joe Ingalls with Bogut in support. Nick Kay hands over to Mills. Slower tempo from the Boomers as Bogut gets it. Shot clock to single digits. Now on the floor wants Ingalls rolling to the hoop from close range. He gets the two to open his scoring account. Another super pass by Andrew Bogut. <laughs> Timeout call by the USA. 1.31 left on the clock here in this opening quarter. And a three-point buffer with Australia scoring the last five to get themselves back into the frame. And that layup, an easy two, just what Joe Ingalls needed. Well, it's amazing how many open shots Joey's missed. We know he's a world-class shooter. And the majority of them have hit the front of the rim. A lot of short shots from Joe Ingalls needs to make an adjustment. Let's hear what Pope... To just to remind me... Had a little right. something to say, did he? He didn't, but his supporters certainly said, okay. well, uh, have you had a look at the latest highlight reel from the big man? So, but terrific work by Andrew Bogan. Pretty good company. He is, absolutely. Tatum left alone from close range. Bogan got there late, but was there quickly enough to worry him out of the points. Plumley can't control it. It trickles out of bounds in Australia with a chance to eat into this buffer even further. And Andrew Bogut plays a critical role in this team. Coming off the bench is perfect in my mind. Such a great passer. You see him as a rim protector there. He's used to doing it against NBA superstars, so certainly not intimidated either. Ingles from close range, hands over to Nick Kay. Pass was deflected, and now Kemba Walker with it. For the United States, Scott Jalen Brown working with him. That's a tough shot, but he made it look easy to come up with his first score in the game. And that's the thing. When you're looking at this USA team, they're 10 of 16, 62% from the field, and... A lot of it's just better offense is beating pretty good defense. Now, the intensity, the ball pressure, there's a lot of things you can focus on, but it's not like that uh, the, the boomers are just chumps out here. They're, they're 
they're applying themselves. It's just really, really good offense right now by the United States and good finishing. Campbell with it onto the floor for the Boomers. Inside the last minute of this opening term, Ingles, guarded by Jalen Brown. A clear out for him. Here's Nick Kay rolling down to the low block. Did well, protected the ball and came up with the finishing touches. That's 12, 12 points now have come from points in the paint for Australia. So they're doing a good job with that cutting action and finding them for those points around the basket. Donovan Mitchell picks up the dribble. Needs support, gets it back from Tatum. Now it's on the floor, spinning one way, back the other. Well done, Nick Kay. Just shut him down. Shot clock rolls to red numbers. It's short, and the Boomers have it with the last play of the opening turn. Ingles draws contact. Foul's going to be on Brown. It's going to be his second personal. Nick Kay really needs to establish himself and find his, his role in this team. And with Jonah Bowen, Jonah Bolden no longer in the squad, opportunity is going to be there. There you see the foul on, on Brown. Good foul. It is a very Wrecking good foul as they weren't in the bonus. Three and a half to play, term number one. Engels knocked down, couldn't get a whistle. Bogut's forced to fire. It's off the front of the rim and entertaining. First term concludes here in game one. It was the USA by two at quarter time. It's only two points in the last three minutes, so a real change in their defensive uh, outcomes and rebounding is uh, been in Australia's favour. Ten to six, they lead it in that first quarter. And they've been very unselfish. Eight assists to only three for the Americans. The, the Americans want to get it done with individual brilliance. They've got the ability to break their man down, score against an opponent where you see this sort of ball movement and man movement. They rely on each other. This is Bogut. Firing over the top, whistle on the play. He gets a chance at a three-point play and a quick foul called on Brook Lopez. And although he's right-handed, this is where he's at his best. Coming to the middle, that nice little baby hook with the left. Great touch by the big fella. And goes to the line for the potential three-point play and much improved in this area. He spends a lot, a lot of time working on his free throws. He's very committed to it and he's seeing the results. Again, like you mentioned, Hammer, a little 1-2-2 two, two half-court trap action by Australia, and it comes up tr almost trumps. Shot clock works to 10. They're hardly into their offensive set at the moment. Marcus Smart fires. Whistle on the play. Referees tonight, Michael Ayl and John Chapman, Chris Reed. Well, I think the advantage for Australia, trying to play with some sort of half-court traps, is the NBA guys don't play against it. Mm. You, ne you very rarely see that sort of defense in the NBA, and I think that we have to have those sort of tactics up our sleeve, in and out of zones, man-to-man, -man, half-court traps, just to disrupt what they're trying to do in the way they normally play. Uh, true, and, and I think that you can't stay in it too long because the athleticism and the smart they figure it out, but to throw it in every now and again, and that trap there was more about just trying to delay the game, delay the shot attempt, get it lower into the shot clock than it necessarily was about trying to, to get a steal, which they almost came up with. But the other thing it does too is when you're in a zone, you've got different rotations and different ways to defend any of the pick and rolls. You're not relying on the big guy from the back line. The other guard can come across and it makes them do something a little bit different. And usually in the zone, in good ones, there's built-in help. USA back on top by two. Early stages, term number two. Ingalls had the ball knocked away. Nick K gets after it. Harassed all the way there by Harrison Barnes. And they've got eight on the shot clock here, still in the backcourt. So Golding needs to get busy. Top of the key, he's going to fire the three. Caught it deep. Long rebound comes to Marcus Smart. Lopez with it. Tatum who shares it across with Joe Harris. Guarded by Golding in the corner. Stepped out of court. Don't tell Shane Hill. One of my pet hates case. Do not like it at all. I see too many people practice making bad habits and stepping out of bounds in practice as well. That was a little bit different. I think you give credit to the Australians' defence for more of this one. I know you've got to know where you are on the floor, but it's, they were pushed out. Really good defensive set. The last four or five minutes by Australia, they're the ones that have cranked it up on the defensive end. Deliver Dover getting some treatment, needs help. This is Ingalls. Works into the paint, largely uncontested and off class adds another two to tie it away at 28 again off the pick and roll for joe ingles oh what a hustle that was matty delavadova getting down getting it done as he wrestles the ball away from team usa and that's his trademark get up and in 
put pressure on the ball. And that ultimately has to become the trademark of the Australian team. And over the first three games, we've seen improvements in the defensive end every single time. I like this. I like this a lot. 90 seconds down. Term number two, level terms. Deliver Dover with it. Ingles, extra pass. K, no room for his shot. Glidden, though. Fires, can't connect. Harris grabs the rebound. Beautiful set, though. Good ball movement. Unselfishly finding the open man. Glidden couldn't knock it down, but I like the, the process that they're going through on the offensive end. Well, going hard at it, but denied was Joe Harris. So the D, good again from the Boomers. As Ingles brings them up the floor. Game working to the foul line and now decides to fire over the top. Australia in front for the first time in the game. That is a great sign for the Boomers. The great man Joe Ingles now with six points. Three from four from the field. We've pumped him up about his ability to bring other people into the game with five assists as well. Here's Harris once more. Sharing around the perimeter. Barnes firing Marcus Smart. Can't connect. Glid on the rebound and he feeds Ingles. Australia with momentum here at the moment. They enjoy a two-point lead and Ingles decides to go back-to-back. -back. Can't convert as Tatum grabs the rebound. We're getting some latitude, which is never a good thing. Goes backwards though. Lopez fires. It's off the mark. Rebound snatched there by Harrison Barnes and he draws a foul. Nick K just trying to find his identity in this team and that will go a long way to doing that great block and Joe Ingles like you mentioned finds his spot steps back mid-range nothing but the bottom of the net but on the, the defensive end in the last six minutes the United States have only made the one field goal and this is a good challenge for the United States who are you know, very new together. One of the mantras from uh, Coach Popovich is composure and poise. And being headed by the, the boomers for a brief minute is that's what they're going to have to come up with to be able to work their way through in the second half of the second quarter. Mills bobbled the pass but collects it and goes to Landale. The foul going to be called off the ball. Not as though Lopez is in the vicinity. And he's picked up another. He picked up early fouls in game one, Brook Lopez, and he's got problems here again, just being caught tugging at the shirt of Aaron Baines. So the Aussies doing a good job of it at the moment. As Baines, top of the key, hands over to Mills. He wheels around, thought about the three, and just skims away. Oh out of court. Oh, my. She certainly did not expect to see that from someone like Patty Mills, one of our best shooters of all time. Yeah, he's a star. And the good thing about Patty, he can have those ones and that one barely grazing the rim. Does not seem to affect him. His body language, he stays with it. Joe Ingalls doing what Joe Ingalls does with those long inspector gadget arms, able to deflect the ball and come up with something cheap for the boomers. Chris Middleton says, you can't be that casual with Joe around. And collects the foul as well. Great work by Joe. I love the extended defense. And that's another thing. Across an 82 game season, you don't see a lot of extended full court defense in the NBA. And again, just a little different look that the uh, they're thrown at the Team USA. 71% free throw shooter in the NBA, Joe Ingles. That's the third team foul on the USA in this term as well. And we played a tick over three minutes, so that is a minor concern that they will need to manage. As Ingles puts Australia back on top, 32-31. Here's Mitch Creek checking in to give Ingles a rest. I'm a bit surprised that Andre Lamanis didn't stay with Andrew Bogut for a little bit longer. I thought his impact off the bench was impressive in small minutes. Five points, a couple of boards, he got an assist, a steal as well. Yeah, he's gone to his bench a lot earlier, deeper in his bench a lot earlier. Glidden already seeing some action. Here's Middleton with it. Shot clock works to single digits now as he shares it to Marcus Smart. Against Baines, we caught him a little off balance and he gets down low enough glass, adds another two. So Mills rushes up the floor. Just exploring. A mismatch here against Lopez. He's drawn him out of his comfort zone. Might fancy his chances. Now the lob pass. We wanted Landale. That was ambitious. And eventually Middleton put a stop to it. Not a lot of support ahead of him. But he may not be discouraged by that. 
Andrews Middleton once more getting it back from Lopez, firing unsuccessfully. So the shooting woes continue for the USA in this term. Just two of six from the field. And credit the Aussie D, Landale. Outside, Baines, firing, can't connect. Landale, the offensive rebound, and draws another foul. That's four fouls on the USA in this term. Much better job on the boards tonight for the Boomers. Tough task coming out of the, the athleticism and the experience of this USA team. But Australia has been up to the task as we see Smart take it at his ex-teammate Aaron Baines. Here we go. Great finish around the basket, isn't it? Tremendous touch. Good instinct. Oliver Dover, one way, back to the left-hand side, needs help, Landale puts it on the floor, an opening presents itself, of course can't convert, pressure came there from Team USA and Kemba Walker, back up the floor, greeted by Mitch Creek, middle stage is term number two, it's a one-point spread at the moment, after we started this term with the USA on top by three, here's Middleton, penetration, worried out of the points, Fantasy bonus situation, a foul caught in the USA and free throws to come here for the Boomers. Probably in the rebounding contest, I'm, I'm guessing. Here we see Middleton get to the rim. And, yeah, just a little, little push up, push off, turn up. So in the back, so we walk the length of the floor and drop land out. Goes, not much in it. Very, very little in that one. I think uh, Landale did a really good job of selling it as well. well. I think he can stop it really good job. I think Landale's doing an excellent job. All Wait, three he, games he's played. He's been impressive. He really has been one of the shining lights from probably most people who didn't know a lot about him didn't have this expectation, but he's played himself into a major role come the World Cup, and it started with a standout performance against Canada a week ago. I think it really started for him in the summer league when he was over in the United States playing with the Milwaukee Bucks. Averaged 18 points a game, 42% from the three-point line throughout the summer league. That'll get you some attention. And my understanding is he's offered NBA contracts, but he's locked into his deal with Sal Garris. And there we see a foul, and that's one that Matty delivered over. Gee, we've seen a lot worse oh, oh. contact than that not called. It's soft. Second foul on Matty Della Vadova, third team foul on Australia. You were saying the bonus at the moment, still five minutes remaining here, term number two. Elevation came there from Mitchell, but it's off the mark. The shooting woes continue here. They can't buy a bucket at the moment, the USA. And Della Vadova goes back at Mitchell to draw a foul on him, and now there's more free throws for Australia. Out. Last night with Collingwood as they took on Essendon and of course uh, played college ball in the States. In case you, uh, you accused me when uh, I went to Kevin Pangos and labelled him a superstar. Was it you or Hammer? Just uh, it was you shot me down. I'm not sure Mason Cox. He is a terrific player. Did you see the preliminary final last well, year? Well, he got them into the grand final. One well, swallow doesn't known. make a summer, as someone once told me. I'm easily impressed. <laughs> he's. Oh, I think he's got a higher reputation here than he does for his college basketball career. Oh, no doubt. Huh? No, he's but, a, uh, and a great, a ripping fella too. And he hosted. I believe uh, a lot of the NBA guys to, at the uh, Collingwood Essen game last night to talk them through the finer points of the game. Well, they got their hands full here at the moment, Team USA, and you won't hear that too often. Down at the moment with foul troubles and with an inability to knock down a field goal so far in this second term. Shot clock rolls to five. The Australians are all over them again. Will they get one off? And no, he travelled. Oh, go Australia. Have a look at that. Tough, passionate defense that has America on their heels. You love it. Look at the excitement from Jock Landau when he was able to cause that violation. Great stuff. Yeah, that'll be shown on the review a number of times of say, well, this is what we want our brand to look like. And Paddy Mills gets fouled attempting a three. So a real opportunity now to ask some questions of this United States team and see where their mindset's at where when the ball's not dropping, when it's not getting done on the offensive end, how do they stand up? It's very tough to defend that. When you're locking and trailing a player like Paddy Mills, which you have to, he can't go any under any on-ball screen. 
if he stops up as, as quickly as what he does then, yeah. the momentum takes you into being able Still to foul him. And this might be exactly what Paddy Mills needs to get going. He's one from five from the field. And sometimes, as you know, Drewy, mm. you get a couple of cheapies from the free throw line. And the next time he gets his feet set from the three, it's net. You never worry about Paddy's numbers. You know he's always going to believe that the next one's going in. Unlike some players, you can almost see the nervousness about them when uh, they've missed a few, but not Paddy Mills. Six unanswered points from the Australians. They have a five-point lead. Their biggest lead in Game 1 was a three-point edge in the second quarter, and there's certainly parallels between Game 1 and this game where Australia made their move at the start of the second. And the USA... Well, they need to find a way to score here at the moment. They are struggling. This is White, who's checked in, looking to make something happen. Rushes to the hoop, couldn't get the finish, but he's drawn a foul. Free throws to come. That was unfortunate because great defense from Matthew Delavidova. Good pick and roll defense too. Look at yep. Aaron Baines. He didn't commit fully because if he had, if they would have just jumped, uh, dumped it off over the top for an easy dunk. But he sort of kept the offensive player guessing. And that, and then the key to that is Paddy is uh, Matty Delavidova's ability to get over the screen, and the chase is a lot shorter for him to get back in front. Now he never got there completely because he committed the foul. But the intensity and effort that is required to do that is very, very difficult, and he is one of the best at it. And three fouls one. for Matthew Delavidova now. That's why he's taking a seat. But, uh, Paddy Mills will now play point guard minutes. So he's played from the shooting guard for the time he's played so far tonight. Make that adjustment now, which he's more than capable of doing a good job with. Here's Mitch Creek. Landale. Goes back to Creek. Muscles into the paint from close range. Nice finish for Mitch Creek to get his scoring account open. Good use of the body, wasn't it? Down low, just used his strength, lower level, lower legs, and powered up through. Made it look real easy. Inside the last four minutes of the first half, where Australia enjoying a five point edge. Here's Kemble Walker with it, guarded by Mill. Shot clock rolls to seven. Alan Brown needs help, provided by Turner. An unlikely conveyance, so he hands out. He's fouled Derek White. Hit on the head was the call from referee Chris Reed and Joe Ingalls, and not best pleased. Well, I think they guessed on that foul and guessed wrong, according to Joe Ingalls. No. All ball with the hand. I think what the one he's got him with is just the elbow to the head. And unlucky. What about we got a chance to speak to the great Jeff Van Gundy? Oh, in yes. the warm ups. And uh, he said, Did you go to the footy last night? He said, Yeah, I did. He goes, Those guys are tough. He said, You couldn't play 82 games of that. He said, I reckon Mitch Creek could play that sport. Any man with a leg tattoo like that and a mullet could play AFL footy. And Jeff, let's not remember, he's had a big part of this whole campaign. He coached the team throughout the qualifiers the last two, uh, two 18 months or so that got him there. They went 10 and 2 in the America zone and uh, finished on top and did a, a wonderful uh, effort with players coming from Europe, calling on American players from all over the world and him bringing them together. He had a tough assignment and did really, really well. Don't worry about any of that. He is the best in the business of commentating for this. Very entertaining. So Australia by three. Took over three minutes out from half time. Still, the USA with just two field goals in this quarter. Look at Mills, look off the team. Again, Andrew Bogut, when he plays in that high post position, you see everybody get excited moving without the ball to get cheapies. Top of the key. This is Brown firing and filling it up. A much needed bucket for the USA. And that's the problem you have when you're showing so high. That time I thought Land Jock Landale made the adjustment was really high, but it was the step back. His man stepped back for the three and good enough to knock it down. Paddy Mills with it. Shot clock at 10. Trying to move away from Walker, gets it back in rhythm, fires unsuccessfully. Tatum got a piece of it, and he's got help down there as well. As they reel it in, and a chance now for Team USA to tie it away. Get off! And it's six, and they have tied it. 42 of these, 220 to play in the first half. Timeout called here. It's 88 was the final there. It was an entertaining affair. 
okay, so saw Carmelo Anthony finish with 31 points. Down the stretch, and he really turned it on, didn't it? When they uh, they're looking for some scoring, Carmelo Anthony was a, was a superstar. Hit nine threes. He was like that throughout his entire international career. He has been one of the all-time great USA international performers. If Maybe not, best. If, yeah, I was about to say, if not the best over a long period of time. Love him. This is Paddy Mills. Took over two minutes out from halftime. He puts the foot on the accelerator and he gets a user-friendly roll as well. He's up to nine points in the game, including seven in this turn. Walker looking for the answer and he has got it. And that's what we're talking about in the last game. You heard Andrew Bogan yelling out, ice, ice. And that was to say, well, don't let him come back to the middle. I've got you the help on the baseline. But when you, he's allowed to accept that screen, then it's just a matter of whether he's going to make or miss the shot because there's no help available. Nick Kay taking on Jalen Brown. Oh, good effective finish as well from Nick Kay, who's got four in the game on two of two shooting. Seesawing affair with Australia back on top, although Jalen Brown has got other ideas and gets it now to Kemba Walker. Started on the bench in this game, but he's rapidly exploded to 12 points to lead all scorers. Here's Mills. Got Mitch Creek in support. He goes hard to the rim off the glass, just a little too hard. Cover D from Brown. Just worried him out of it. As Tatum grabs it next. Still yet to score in the game, but if you're going to open your scoring account, do it like that! <laughs> that is a beautiful drive straight down the middle and with the right hand stuffs it in. And that'll help get him going as well. Great drive and USA doing a good job just weathering this storm. A little bit of a semi-storm by the Boomers. Well, ten lead changes in this turn. It has been an outstanding action as Bogut goes to work. He gets it done. Chance of a three-point play. Three, look at Tatum. He's on the wing. Nick Kay reluctant. You saw him just take a swipe on it, and that's usually the rules. When the guy's in the, sh the corner, that's the highest percentage three-point shooter, so you don't want to come off the help on there. There needs to be some... Split line help from the weak side, and if it's not there, that's what's going to happen. They're going to stuff it through the rim, Case. I like this from Bogan as well. He is able to create opportunities not only for himself, okay. but because One. of his terrific passing ability, yep. they have to play him, and he's a difficult cover. Get that, get that, get that. Oh. Can't get the finishing touch. His ball knocked down out of court by Nick K. In fact, Stop. Bogut had more assists than rebounds in game one. And here's Dave Barlow. Late replacement for Jonah Bolden. Barlow checks into the game. What a story that has been as Bogut gets a rest. Two-time Olympian, two-time world championship player and a four-time championship winner here in Australia with three different teams. 35 years of age. He may be pound for pound the strongest player in our domestic NBL. How about that finish? Nice work there from White. we got clear access to the basket and puts the USA back on top. Yeah, after some great defensive sets, really did a good job restricting the field goals of Team USA the last couple of minutes. It's just been the straight penetration. Barlow with the help from the weak side that time, but just a fraction late. Shot clock, game clock, one second differential as Mills penetrates. Tough shot, never looked likely. Tatum with the rebound and he's off and running. Last play of the first half. They work it for Brown in the corner. This is after the event, not going to count. Didn't tumble anyway, but an entertaining first half concludes with the USA enjoying a one-point lead. And uh, and they have had less assists tonight than they did in game one. And as happy as Andre Lamanis will be, he will only have to remember back to Thursday night where the Boomers were down one point at halftime. Yep. Exactly the same margin as we've got right here. And then a 32 to 18 third quarter burst from the United States. We have to make sure that on the defensive end, we don't let them get flow tonight. There's definitely a different, different look about the defense by Australia tonight. And it's, it's improved every single game. So and it's going to need to do that again in the second half. But the encouraging thing also on the offensive end is Australia's had 26 points in the paint and the United States only 10 in the paint. So doing a good job. And a lot of that's come from weak side action, diving and some great passing. Set to go in the second half. USA with a possession arrow and a one-point lead. We saw Australia score the first bucket of the third quarter in game one, but after that it was one-way traffic. There's Mitchell elevating it short, well short. Landale the rebound there. Out of their rhythm here, the USA. Della Vadova. Screen from Baines who rolls to the hoop. Landale joins in as well. Rejected. What a defensive play from Miles Turner. 
They rush back up before he started the play and he's going to finish it. It looks like from the foul line. Down the other end, it started with, like you mentioned, have a look at the work. There comes the help. Great pass by Delavadova. Landale goes up with the two hands. Turner says, no, sir, not in my house. And he leads the break. Terrific athleticism by Miles Turner. And I expect them to come out with a different mindset. You would imagine that uh, Pop may have been a little cranky at halftime. Speaking of these guys and challenging them, and I spoke about it earlier, their mantra is composure and poise. He will have challenged them with that. Well, they extend the margin. We had 12 lead changes in the first half, but it's USA by three here. Early stages of term number three. One knocked down out of court. 12 on the shot clock here. Looks very at home, doesn't he, Landau? Six points, five boards at half time, and he just keeps doing it. He has been the real surprise packet. This is Ingalls, mounted by Middleton. Mills, looking for penetration, scoop pass, Baines at the top for the three. It's deep. And Turner grabs the rebound. Was so impressive in game one, Turner. 15 points, 14 boards. Here he is again, wheeling and dealing, and a nice finish as well. His first field goal of the game. Now's the body control. Comes down, nice little drop step and beautiful touch just around the rim. USA has scored the last. It's Baines with a clean-up dunk, and he's happy about it as well with a chance at a three-point play. Well, it was Ingles that made the play, though. Great pull-through. Have a look at this from the wing. Does it in slow mo. Got there. And Baines just following it up, and that's what the big fella has to do. Not just rely on pick and pop jump shots. Do some of that little work. We know he's tough under the bucket. Got some athleticism for a big fella too. And Miles Turner, he'd be looking at his teammates saying, well, hang on, if you want me to come over and help, someone's got to get, get into the legs of my guy to keep him off the boards. Australia go back to their original five, interestingly. Delavadova out there with three fouls. The USA made one change to their original oh, no. five. And the big man's firing. They won't mind that. But we see Kemba Walker, who started on the bench, starts here in the third ahead of Marcus Smart. Good Mills knocked out. Good hustle there from Miles Turner. I think we might have been a tad fortunate with that call, didn't we? It was an interesting one. It happened pretty quick, but uh, Bobble wasn't the prettiest of plays. It's tangled up, and oh no, oh, maybe you're right. Ingles guarded by Middleton, who's giving him close attention now. Not surprisingly, after Ingles had eight points in the first half, more than he scored for the entire game. And the opener on Thursday night, oh, he looks off the D. Just didn't get enough on the shot, and Kemba Walker with a rebound and off and running. This is looking dangerous for. The USA as he feeds Barnes, who works closer to the hoop and comes up with the two. He's got 13 on five of five shooting. And that's the worrying thing for me. If we miss shots, America is so good in transition. It doesn't matter if you get numbers back. They're good enough to be able to score against numbers. Mills, off balance, fire on one leg. Comes up with the two. He's got nine in the game. That's how good he is. Picture perfect shooting technique and very crafty. Good balance. A little dirt in the whiskey about it. Was, it had a little bit of it, didn't it? That's too nice as Turner provides for Chris Middleton. And that's too easy. Need a lot more ball pressure when the player can distribute it like that. Puts a lot of pressure when you're trying to guard those cuts. Ingles shares it. Deliver Dover in space. Draws contact on Middleton. Can't finish it, but he's off to the free throw line. You talk about that D-trans. They get some bodies back. It's the kick out, the close out, and Landale just over commits, which you have to. Barnes has been great, and Middleton on the curl cut. No help from the screener, and the easiest of two. And always tough on those kill cuts. And the only really, the way you can protect that is obviously the help from the screener, but a bit more ball pressure, try and get a deflection, make that pass a lot harder. And Daly finds himself the line because he drove and he drove to score. Sometimes I think uh, Daly's been guilty of driving just for the pass. Then they don't come to him and he doesn't get anything. So good adjustment from him. Landale making himself a presence. USA put a stop to it. A chance now for Kemba Walker. Oh, look at the quicks he's got. Yeah, too fast. He's lightning quick as he makes two draws a foul. It was, and it happened so quick it was hard to follow, but I think he also did a great job of using his body. Landale was there. Here you see him on his heels, and just that little step in, and the timing of that shot never gave Landale a chance to get up and block it. Well, he's left on an island, the big fella. He looked like Tasmania out there at the three-point line. 
Pembla Walker tacking him off the dribble. And that's the a mismatch. And that's the judgment you've got to make when you're guarding those on balls. You come too high and those big fellas are out there that they, the, the smaller guards can get around them. And just got to sit back and try and make a tough contested two rather than getting that deep. So the margin out to six, the biggest we've seen in the second half. And no Kyle Kuzma tonight, finished with 12 points in game one, but sitting out this with a sore left ankle as Landau jumps upstairs and throws it down. A little, a little one, two, two extended defense by Australia, by the United States gets exposed. Good D from Baines there as he kept Barnes at bay. And now Ingalls exploring, rolling to the hoop. We got push there, Baines. Oh, no whistle. He is making his name. When I like the fact that Australia saw the press, they didn't try and just pass the way through it to get it over. They actually tried to attack it. And it started with the ball control of Dalavadova, who got it to Ingalls, who got his six assists for the game. Four point margin. Took over three minutes played to him. Number three, Walker. Just throws it up after the contact. Foul's going to be called on Paddy Mills. It's going to be his first personal. Ten teams fouls overall in Australia, 14 on the USA, but they've got three and two respectively in this quarter. They did, and you're right, Hammond. The way in which Australia beat that extended press, it's sort of like one of those token presses, but the advantage, disadvantage of the American teams. When was the last time you saw an NBA team throw in a little 1 2 2 trap or uh, extend the defense? So they're not used to it, whereas Australia. They practice it because they use it a lot themselves and they practice against it and, and uh, clearly were a little bit better set up and got the cheapie. Well, I'm not sure Pop will have that much confidence to go back to it after that. So Walker, again, a steady influence at the bench tonight. It's starting to build impressive numbers again. 17 points on 6 of 7 shooting and 3 of 3 from the strike. For all the good we've been talking about Australia, I think this next 3 or 4 minutes has proven to be critical in the game. We've got to find a way to keep that scoreboard ticking over. It's tough on the other end, the defensive end, to get those stops. Got to keep keep trying to find a way to, to score. Well, the margin's out to 7. The biggest we've seen so far was an 8-point edge for Team USA with three minutes to play in the opening quarter. Australia's biggest lead, a five-point edge in the second. This is Mills from just beyond the foul line. Put the front of the rim. Tip in from Baines. Wouldn't work. And a chance now for Walker in the USA to go running again. And nice tricks behind the back. Step back. Look good. Can't complete it. Landale the rebound as he wrestles the ball away from Harrison Barnes. Ingles. Baines. Telegraphed the pass a little. It was knocked down there. My active hands from the USA. Here's Walker once more. Barnes puts it on the floor, bounces into Landale. Now going to be called on the Aussies. A third team foul in this quarter. Defensive transition so, so critical. And that time just never were able to contain the ball. Always on the back foot. And with the penetration, Landale with the reach in. And we're seeing Andrew Bogut come back again. Andre Lamanis has had great service tonight from both Baines and Bogan. They've got 20 points between them, shooting the ball at a high percentage, rebounding well. And uh, both of these players are going to be critical in the five position come the World Cup next next uh, next week. And this is the best we've seen them play. 100%. And let's go to the point. I know it's uh, going to be tough down the other end of the floor, but if you wanted to throw a look at, maybe you can... Time to time, play the two of them together on occasions. It, uh, it would, perhaps on the defensive end, that might make it tough. But maybe throw in a little zone, keep them on the floor at the same time, and, and go old school. Well, it's certainly something that you would expect Andre Lamanis to be at least toying with, particularly if both are in good form. Biggest lead of the game so far. Nine point edge. It's been 16 points to eight in favour of the USA in this quarter. But Bogan gets a user-friendly roll, and he's now into double figures with 11, and no one has more for Australia. Desperate for a stop, though. The point's coming too easy for USA here in term number three, and they find a good look here for Barnes. As Bogan grabs the rebound, and they catch a break there, the Boomers. Bogan with the ball-carrying duties, if you don't mind. Now Ingalls. Bogut roll into the hoop, no passing lane open. It's a back from Landale. Shot clock works to single digits here. And Landale started and wanted the pass to Bogut. 
come up empty. And Landale's going to be called for the foul here. And that's going to be over the limit. So free throws to come. Bogut's touch when he puts the ball to the floor. This time it's with the right. Comes that with the left. But if he can start to make that shot on a consistent basis, when you've got those elite shooters coming off the handoff, you're almost forced to provide some sort of help. And they're just that step out of position. And Bogut can take advantage of that really. Makes the offense be uh, all that more potent. We can fool the defense sometimes, can't he? Because he's so potent with his passing. And you start got to respect about the where the cutters are, and that time he just read it. His man bites on those little handoffs and puts it to the floor and be aggressive on the offensive end. Looks good. Eight point ball game, middle stages, term number three. Pressure up the floor. Nick Kate just looking a little concerned, and that's why they forced him into an error. Tatum will finish in style. Well, if we're relying on Nick Kate to bring it up against the little 2 2 1, we're going to be in some big trouble. Funeral call. Well, this is quite a contest with the USA just starting to stamp their authority on this at the moment. We've got some celebs in the house. Again here for game two, along with 50,000 plus. Anthea Lapalia will be well known to many people who love their TV movies in a crime series. Oh, in. I know you're into that, Drewy. Oh. Is it his brother that does Survivor? Is that, uh... That's your big favourite show at the moment, isn't it, as well? But let's get back to this, because the Boomers have got their hands full. They've scored only 10 points here in five minutes, and the offence is just stuttering at the moment. Ingles, we turn down the wide-open three. They get an even better shot as he rolls to the hoop, and he's into double figures. And that is the bread and butter of this Boomers team. You get the ball in the hands of Andrew Bogut. You've got Paddy Mills coming off one way. A little bit of a deflection there back to Joe Ingles. Good basketball. Good recognition by Joe. Saw the big man Plumley. Knew he'd be able to get by him rather than just settling for the three. Gets the one on the rim, the cheapy on the rim. Walker, good screen from Plumley. Caught it short. Plumley tried to keep it alive. But Ingles has got it now from Golding. Now Bogut. Behind the back pass. Mills back to Bogut. Confronted by Plumley. Says, you can't guard me. I'll have two. I'll go to the line. We've gone back to the Rio days here. The ball movement, the slickness, the way in which they're coordinating with each other. And the big man, Andrew Bogut, stepping up and finishing around the rim. This is a thing of beauty. That's a great pass from Paddy Mills. You've got to respect him when he comes off those pick and rolls. Nice little... And, uh, Andre Romanis, a lot of credit for the way this, this team's been building. That's the, the fourth game we've seen, and each and every game they've gotten better. They've taken the, the, the lessons from each game and built on them, and specific areas you've seen the, the improvements. And that's not easy in a very short period of time when you don't have a lot of practice time. Anything hurting the Boomers at the moment? They are 2 of 15 from the free point line, and wow. they have missed their last seven shots since quarter time from deep. And that's a strength of ours, too. So a five-point run from Australia. They halve the deficit, but not for long, as Jalen Brown comes up with a two. Had to miss a shot in the game. Brown, seven on three of three shooting. Inside the last four minutes, turn number three. Golding, guarded by Tatum. Went into a trap. Wraparound pass for Bogut. Ball dislodged, and now a chance for them to get up the floor through Brown. Here's Tatum. Euro stepping his way into the paint, but it's knocked away by Nick Kay. Golding bounce pass for Bogut. Ingles in the corner, being denied at the moment by Harris. And eventually... Have a look at call for the foul. And you see the adjustment from Team USA at the defensive end on Chris Golding. 19 points in the first game. Today only one from two. So you see a nice little finish to the bucket. That time Nick Kay comes through and takes it off the rim. But Chris Golding has not been able to get a sniff of it tonight. They will not help off him at all. The possession before, we see Paddy Mills cut to the basket. But there was no way that the defender of Chris Golding was helping off at all. USA with 14 fouls now in this term. Australia already over the limit. 3.30 to play. Term number three. This is Golding. It's a score since quarter time. Off the ball. Paddy Mills crashes to the floor. So, bonus situation now. Five, three. Brief foes to come. As Donovan Mitchell picks up the foul. 
puts three on him. Chris Middleton has three fouls as well. Likewise for Australia, Delavadova and Landale with three. Need to take advantage of this at the moment because mm. it's in danger of just slipping away from Australia. And these are the, the cheapies that you need when the defense is cranked up, try and figure out a way to get to the free throw line. Paddy Mills, an excellent free throw shooter. Tell me what Andrew Bogut does well is when he's got guys coming off on those handoffs, he turns his body. Now, I don't know if it's always legal, but he does a magnificent job of creating separation to be able to distribute that ball. Very effective. Margin cut to five once more. Pressure up the floor as well. They try and deny Donovan Mitchell the ball. They did that, but they've got Jalen Brown to contend with now as he retreats away from the defense. Contact off the ball, no whistle. Brown goes on, but eventually lost control. Wasn't sure where to go. Had a brain explosion and threw it out of court. And that's good work by Nick Kay. He would... Uh, to be able to move his feet, be able to put that ball pressure on him, on uh, a Brown who's got the advantage off the dribble. It's great work by Nick Cake. Eight turnovers for the USA. Australia has nine. Bogut Mills wheeling around for the three. Bogut and it went back to within two. Well, and that's the other side of that play we saw before. That time Paddy got it. The time before they faked Paddy. Got it back for the pick and pop three for Joe Ingles. Tough shot. More free throws to come here. Golding doesn't like the court. Let's get a look at Paddy Mills once more, though. It is. It's great movement. He works just as hard off the ball as he does with the ball. And he's a little buzzsaw bouncing around. He's got the 14 points. Only 4 of 12, 33%. But that undersells what he's been able to deliver. The attention that he's bringing to himself, opening up space and positions for others, can't be underestimated. Seven of his 14 have come in this third quarter, Drewy, and that's out of the 20 that Australia has scored. Much closer than they were at this juncture in the game on Thursday night. Not just on the scoreboard, but also the look and feel of the game. Sometimes the score doesn't always reflect what's happening, but this is definitely a ball game that's got the Americans thinking about it. It was 14 points, the difference. USA's way in game one of this series at this point. So here's Deliver Dover. Quiet night by his standards. Just the two points. Yet to hit a field goal. Just for one assist as well. Paddy Mills. Thank you very much. With the touch too. And don't underestimate the free throws that Paddy had a couple of minutes ago. Saw it go through the net. He's made two threes since. And Mills with ten in the quarter. Margin cut to one. Bobbley. Foul called on Australia, so free throws to come. But Paddy Mills has lit it up here in term number three. He does. He senses the moment really well. He's an experienced guy, been to a couple of Olympics, been a leading scorer at the Olympics, and he's got the last eight points just reading the moment. Nick Kay coming in a little late. I think it was probably could have picked between Mills and Kay. I think they gave it to Kay. How pretty is that jump shot from Paddy Mills? A thing of beauty. If the young folk out there looking... Just try and get a slow-mo of that shot. Not that one. <laughs> As opposed to that free throw. Now, this is not textbook. It was effective, <laughs> but nice and lovely. Young kids, turn away now. Yeah. <laughs> Look away. Do not... Gee, whatever weight program he's on, get on that one because that is a specimen. That's not great technique. Michael Allen makes the call there. The foul's going to be called on Jalen Brown, so we'll walk to the other end of the floor here. The free throws to come for Australia. These are bad fouls, Case. Because Incredibly you admire, so. You admire their enthusiasm getting after the ball, but you have to be smart enough to know that your team is in the bonus, and after Australia's hit a couple of threes, they've really been able to eat into that deficit that got out to eight points, now back to two. Would have been a chance for Nick Kay to tie this thing up. Much improved performance by Nick Kay One. in game two. Well, he's going to be critical now, Drewy, with 100%. Jonah Bolden out, who I expected to play a big role, but he's no longer there. Nick Kay is going to get more opportunities, and particularly amongst the early games, the pool games, where you need some of your bench to be able to contribute. So versatile. He's just got to find his spot. He's got to find his identity in the team and where he fits, and uh, once he gets comfortable with that, he's going to be fine. Australia. Edge a little closer here. 
And we've got it back to within one. Tick over two minutes left here in term number three. Critical two minutes 22 to go in this third quarter as Australia makes a run at this great team. Australia in Group H at the 2019 FIBA World Cup in China. First game against Canada, September 1, followed by games against Senegal and Lithuania in their group. And here's Jason Tatum. Wanted contact from Kay, no whistle. Feeds in the corner, ready to go, Donovan Mitchell. And that's the problem. When you bite on the roller to the basket, you open up someone like Donovan Mitchell for a wide open trifecta corner pocket. First score since quarter time for Donovan Mitchell. Loose ball, Hustle, Australia win it back. Tatum doesn't like it. Here's that play you're talking about with Mitchell. You're coming, because it's going away, the weak side corner, Matty Delavadova comes off. He had to tag the roller. So the, he's, he's guarding the, trying to help the big man as he comes off. And uh, you just can't help from that position. You can't do it. It has to be a two man game. And you're relying on both guys defending both the on ball screen, the picker, and the guy with the ball. Yeah, it is very difficult because when you're going away, you've got to tag the roller, and you're saying, "Well, what do you want to what do you want to live with a contested three, or or a dump off pass to the, the big man around the basket?" Uh, but it is a, a, that's a decision strategically. It's a decision you've got to make. Already 27 points in this quarter for the USA, their highest scoring quarter of the game. They lead by four after starting this turn with a one point edge. Is Bogan tough shot? He makes it work. Bogan. 16 in the game on 7 of 8 shooting. Well, he, he has been ultra impressive so far tonight, Andrew Bogut. Not just because he's outperformed on the normal output of points that he's got, but his overall impact on the game. USA get it back. Here's Mitchell, energised by knocking down the last shot. Can't complete it there. Golden gets after it and feeds Della Vadova. Less than 90 seconds to play. Term number three. Australia come forward with a chance to retake the lead. Draw level. I'll take either. Della Vadova against Tatum. Looks inside. Nick Case. Hook shot on the bottom of the net. We're tied at 76. Great find by Della Vadova again. And Nick Case. That'll do his confidence in world of good. Impressive performance by Nick Kay. Inside the last 60 seconds, term number three, exploring. Derek White, they've coughed it up. This is Paddy Mills. Australia go to work. Golding with a finishing touch. Protection. Whistle on the play. Free throws to come for Golding as Derek White challenged the shot. Look at Andrew Bogan. He's been super aggressive. His confidence is high. Again, a little fake handoff. This time with the left, he gets to the middle. He wanted the foul as well. To head to the line. And down the other end of the floor, Derek White with a spectacular attempt to try and recover that play. And very close to getting that cleanly. This has been a terrific performance by the Boomers. 20... Sorry, 17 assists out of 27 field goal made. So great effort. This is the sort of team basketball you expect from the Boomers. They can't do it one-on-one, -on -one, so they do it by committee, and they're working for each other tonight. Great ball movement, great man movement. It's 18 points to eight in the last four minutes in favour of Australia as we close in on three-quarter time and Golding to put them back in front. Terrific free throw shooter, Chris Golding. <laughs> Chris 84% on his career. Chris just forgot he'd had a haircut. He's pushing his hair behind his ears on that last. <laughs> well, he makes both. Australia on top here. The Boomers have scored the last six and taken the lead here as we head toward three-quarter time. Campbell Walker, guarded by Mills. Fans getting involved as well. Single digits on the shot clock now for Team USA. Got the mismatch down low. Mills on, on uh, Tatum. Mitchell fires from deep. Had it long. Golding the rebound. Quick outlet pass. Mitch Creek. The Mills did well to rule that hit and so did Ingles. Shot clock is some two seconds inside the game clock ahead of the three-quarter time buzzer. And Paddy Mills with 10 points alone in this quarter of his 17. Off the front of the rim, loose ball. Chance now for Team USA. With the last play of the term and Walker. They can't afford to foul Australia. Over the limit, one on the shot clock. Oh, they dislodged the ball, couldn't get it away effectively. We are set up for a titanic final term with one quarter to play. This is not the fact they're up two points. It was the fact they were able to stifle the momentum.
that USA had being up 10 points. They turned that around and outscored this powerful team by 10 themselves. 20 to 8 was the run in the last five minutes. They're looking to extend it. Unable to do so on that miss from Delavadova. And the foul going to be called on Mitch Creek. It's going to be his first personal. Overall, 15 fouls on Australia, 19 on USA. Momentum in any sport, modern day sport, is very, very difficult to be able to stop. And uh, the Boomers have found a way so far in this game. But watch out. The USA will be ready to throw some punches now. And they're doing it in their 4 of 19 from the three-point line. This is Delavadova off the Walker miss. 30 seconds done in the final term. Ingles, harassed by Middleton, is playing with three fouls. Ingles, good use of the body and just helps himself to two. Australia have a four-point buffer here. And Ingles up to 12 in the game. Great body use from Joe Ingles off that pick and roll. Impossible when you get somebody on your back for them to be able to get back in front. Donovan Mitchell with it. Shot clock rolls to single numbers against Baines in a mismatch. Casually clips it up, couldn't complete it. Ball comes back to Chris Middleton. 51,000 starting to get involved as well, Case. Shot clock to five. Middleton goes to the corner. Firing. Barnes couldn't complete it. And ball going to Australia. Foul called on the USA. Ingles, one of the craftiest players you want to see at any level. Here he is. Reads the defense. Gets him on his back. And just a... Don't underestimate what Aaron Baines did there as well. Just a nice little block to create that that hole for Ingles to get the cheapy. The drought continues here for the USA. Didn't score in the last 70 seconds of the third quarter. It's a score in the first almost 90 seconds here in the final term. Ingles picks up the dribble. Creek looks inside. One of Baines' pass was battered and deflected, but it came to him now. And the big man's got it with five on the shot clock. He goes to work with a hook shot against Miles Turner. Australia scored 10 without reply and lead it by six. Oh, big play at the other end. They needed that Team USA. It was slipping away. And not much more Aaron Baines could have done. He made good position. The defensive trans transition off the main basket. Here we see Baines just takes his time. No help comes. So Baines with a left-hand hook. And down the other end, had to do his work. Just a little reaching got him caught. Just better off keeping the hands up. But the defensive transition off the main basket is what hurt the Boomers on this that occasion. And chance for the three-point play. So the margin halved to a three-point edge for Australia. Almost two minutes played in the final term. So we head toward the 2019 FIBA World Cup in China a week away. Bain's starting to feel the great left-hand hook with the ball, but I think people have underestimated the great work he's done with that gear too. Don't like, I don't like that hammer when the big fellas waste one of their made baskets and it doesn't count. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about his beard, mate. <laughs> no, I love Pretty that. good grooming. He's terrific. He's had on that. Very impressive. Turner with two fouls. Both teams with two fouls in this turn. We played less than two minutes. Tell the top of the key. Working against Kemba Walker. Oh, golden look away pass. He even caught Aaron Baines unawares. Ball deflected out of court. Last touch by the USA. The Aussies have got three on the shot clock. That was slick from Chris Golding. Look at this catch here. A little pocket pass. Bang. Big fella wasn't ready. Hands like flipper on that occasion. Big Aaron Baines. That would have been nice easy dunk. See the urgency about Team USA here. Oh, timeout call. Timeout call. 7.55 left on the clock. Australia to restart one of this series. We had 51,218 in the house. Well, a new record. 52,079. Wow. 103,000 watching basketball in Australia in two games. Oh, Joe Ingles took too long to restart there and credit the Americans there that came out with a plan. Ingles couldn't find a passing lane and they turn it over. 
And this is why these games, Case, are so important for both countries to play in leading up to the World Cup, because they've both been challenged. Don't think that Popovich isn't going to those huddles now. He's trialling different things. He's evaluating what players are going to get it done at critical times in the game. As Australia, as uh, America, get one back. One point of difference. They scored the last five, the USA. Grabbed on the screen. Oh. Off the ball. It's going to be a third team foul called on USA. This is Walker at the other end, and that's hard to stop. That is a great finish. Just using his strength and speed to get that deep, and up against a very good rim protector as well. And Aaron Baines just uses his his. Uh, he smarts to find a way to craft a shot out of that. Well, Walker up to 20 points, but he's seven from 11 from the field. On Thursday night, he got 22 field goal attempts up, so he might have a few up his sleeve. You just sense that he will take the responsibility to get very aggressive in these last seven minutes. Well, Vadova, catch and shoot, can't connect. Landau tried to get a piece of it. Delavadova now none of four from the field. Only points for him to come from the free throw line. Oh, Walker looked like he was fouled. He was at the football last night, probably felt like he was at it again there as they give him some treatment at say. Third team foul on Australia in this quarter. Likewise, the USA has three fouls in this turn. Lee Delavidova just with the reach in. That was the foul call. That's his fourth as well for Matty. So Delavidova with four. Likewise, Donovan Mitchell and Chris Middleton have four. They're not on the floor at the moment, but that is a concern for Team USA down the stretch, but here's Walker. At the moment, they can't stop him. Caught it short, aims the rebound, and now Della Vadova with it. Australia, just four points in this turn. And played almost three minutes. Moves in the corner, Baines heads in that direction. Now he comes to the ball. Shot clock rolls to 10. Baines working against Joe Harris in a mismatch in height. Muscles his way inside. Short-armed it. Tatum taps it to the advantage of Barnes. This is where we need Andrew Bogut on the court as well. I think we have to find a way for Bogut and Baines as we see a big three corner pocket for Harris. And now the USA have got momentum. But this is where I think that Andre Lamanis has to find a way for Bogut and Baines to play together because they're our two best big men. Mills catch and shoot for the answering three. Australia back on top. The intensity you can see in the defensive end from the last three or four possessions when challenged. They've stepped it up. That time, Paddy Mills is able to knock down the three ball. And that snapped an 8-0 run from Team USA. Oh, Baines got one across the chops there. I put that into the memories back. Oh, Golden. Now the ball stepped down of court. Oh, no. Australia with the lead, though. Took over six minutes out. And nervous times for everyone here at the moment. Nice too when Andrew Gaze is nervous, Hammer, because he doesn't say too much. No, I'm just uh, enthralled <laughs> and see the way He's both these, it. these teams are going to attack these last few minutes, and it's great to see the United States sort Greg Popovich appreciate the fact that they're being challenged in such a significant way. I'm sure the 52,079 and everyone watching around Australia and beyond are pretty excited about it as well. Well, the big picture, of course, is the World Cup. And uh, you, you learn more through these types of challenges than you do when you just roll them out and you pick up your 15, 20-point win. What about Australia's offense? 85 points with a tick under six minutes to go in this game. They only scored 70 a week ago against Canada. So the improvement is vast. Just firing there, Joe Harris, loose ball, trickles out of court, last touch by Australia. Well, I think Bogut got away with one too. Like oh, he's around there. It looked like he just grabbed him by the jersey. A little sneaky one. Here we go, So we restart with less than six minutes to play here. And they have to retreat a long way to get it done. The USA. Brown picks up the dribble. It's over. Now Harrison Barnes firing over Nick Kay. Bogan. Who got the rebound. Got it in the tangle there with Joe Harris as well. Wanted a foul, but Michael Allen's not buying it. Great D from Nick Kay. Really good contest without fouling. Have a look at that. Forced him into a tough shot and Bogan up there. 
in the last three or four possessions for the United States is just get it to someone and get downhill. We've really gone one on one, a lot of one on one action. In contrast, Australia getting the ball through some hands and a lot more man and ball movement. Look at Miss all trip there and a heavy fall. Let's hope it's not too serious then because he hit the deck hard, Derek White. Accidental trip from behind. He stumbled forward and just having to compose himself here at the moment. That hurts too. Unfortunate. Nick Kay just running behind. But a little ankle tap. And oh my. I don't think there was an ankle. I think he just tripped over his own. I think there was a feet. little ankle tap. I think was he got caught up. But it looked like his head hit the ground there. My. Yeah, that's tough when you lose your feet and you go, your momentum's going forward and you smack your head onto the, the timber. Oh, let's hope he's okay. No. That's not good. Look here, see, I reckon his leg has just clipped it. You know what? I think he's just just himself. He stumbled over himself, but it doesn't excuse the fact he's had to take a... Look at his head hit the ground here. Big hit. Bang. You can clearly see why the referee would have called it, because he came, he, he tried to cross over from behind, and there's the, the head on the floor. Yeah, we'll just wait till he's finished, because otherwise we'd have to change the left house. I'm in your shooting. Thank you. Thank you. Foul on Australia, okay, so whoever. free throws to come. They're over the limit now. Coming. That's going to be a problem for five minutes and 21 seconds. Big problem, Case. That's a long time to play against a team with that sort of skill that likes to attack you off the yeah. dribble. He's got a perfect game, though. You come in as well? Feeling better tomorrow, but. Okay, as well. We've got two subs. Why we? It hasn't been a great trip for Derek White. Didn't score in game one and was playing so well. Eight points in this one. And that nasty clash there after being tripped. And he's going to be assessed and taken away. So a chance here for the USA to retake the lead. Australia in front just on five minutes left in the contest if you offered that to the punters and to the coaching staff wow <laughs> you'd get the affirmative well it's just been a terrific effort from the boomers here today great offense by both teams Australia they're up to 50 percent from the field and if it wasn't for the tardy three-point work only five of 22 from the three-point line it perhaps might have had a bit more of a margin. Well, even more so. You take Paddy Mills' three-point percentage out there. They're only two from 14. And we need to knock a couple of those down if they're going to get over the line here for the Australian Boomers. USA back on top. A little over five minutes remaining in the contest here. One game won by 16. Mills. Delavadova, quick ball movement to Bogut. They share it across. Mills firing off balance. Tough shot. And longer on the shot clock than he thought. There's still six seconds remaining. I think this, he thought the shot clock was coming down. And there's the foul on Andrew Bogut. He thinks the uh, looking for some divine intervention. And that's what he adds to this Boomers lineup. Have a look at this. Doesn't do a lot wrong, you wouldn't have thought. Straight up. No, that's clean. I think that's great defense as a rim protector. Fouls been assessed, which is second. 20 fouls on Australia overall, the USA with 22. Jalen Brown misses the first. Hasn't scored or just the one bucket since half time. Had 11 in game one. And so the margin is a two point buffer. Inside five to play. Perhaps five of the most important minutes in Australian basketball history. This is Ingalls. One way. Picks up the dribble. Wants help. Looks for Mills down low. Brown right there with him. Bogut. Good use of the body once more. They free Mills. He fires. Can't connect. Gelliver Dover for the rebound. And did enough to work it out of court on Jalen Brown. Great hustle by Matty Gelliver Dover. Even those four fouls. Hint of an over the back. Gets away with it and comes up with another possession for the Boomers.
Firing quickly as Ingles gets off the mark. Kimber Walker gets after the rebound. Looking to build on a two-point advantage. Started this turn with Australia, leading by two. Walker gets inside, finds Brown. Working on Deliver Dover with four fouls. Offensive fouls being called off the ball. Mills went down. Chris Reed, the referee, steps up. Miles Turner was screaming. There was a switch, and Paddy Mills was trying to guard him down low. He's begging for it. You can see him just throw it up anywhere around 11 feet. I'll go get it. And then maybe just a little unlucky with the foul called against him. And that foul is the fourth on the USA in this quarter. So Australia's problem with being in the bonus is mitigated somewhat by that. Here's Boga. They sag off him. Deliver Dover's overdue. Did everything but fall. It's still loose. Getting after the is Joe Harris. Love that set from the Boomers. Really good movement. And they've been getting good shots from it every time. Just tightening up a little bit with the finish line in sight. Walker, he fires, can't connect, and Bogut the rebound. Boomers are 3 of 11 from the field in this final turn. Need a high percentage play, and Bogut gets it back for Ingles. Guarded by Turner in a mismatch. Might like his chances here, says, I do indeed. Joey stepping up exactly when the Boomers need it. Hasn't shot the ball well so far in this offseason. It just goes bang. Getting involved as well here. Good defensive pressure, sensing the moment. Joe Ingles, as you mentioned, Hammer, as smooth as silk. Just a little step back there, yeah, gets his legs up. underneath him and knocks down the three to give the Pumas the lead. And then, good trap. And the guys picks the ball up just over that center line. The Front court only. 15 shot line clock. really providing a good advantage to run that trap. He's allowed and on the line. With the possession arrow, oh. USA retained possession. Della Dover with four fouls and a mismatch problem here against Tatum. Well, Guts in close but can't complete a bogey at the rebound. This is Mills. Australia look to extend their advantage here. A little over three minutes left on the clock. Big play case. History beckons here in Melbourne as Mills retreats away from Tatum and they reset. They isolate for Mills and the triple. It's oh. and we've never beaten the USA. And we're seeing something special. It's not just the fact that they've got the four-point lead, but I'm more impressed with the way in which they're going about it. It's back to that, that the system that we've seen uh, in Rio that was so successful, the ball movement, the cutting action, the dribble handoff, getting it to the right people at the right time. All that's starting to come together. 52,079 in the house. Starting to make some noise as well. And as we head to an enthralling conclusion of this two-game series. It was the USA by 16 in game one, 102-86. The Boomers with the fans behind them. They go to Barnes and from close range, Barnes gets two back. There is an easy one, but have a listen to that crowd in the background. We're up in the commentary box. We can hear it through the glass. The fans are on the edge of their seat, anticipating that the Boomers are going to beat the USA. Eagles wants... Goes to Delavadova. This is Bogan. Shot clock. Rolls to single numbers. Is Mills the man again? Oh, he's more than that. Okay, beautiful recognition by Andrew Bogan. Created that separation for Mills. Found him with a nice cheap mid-range shot. And he's good enough to knock it down. Walker. The three ball. It rattles around and jumped out. It's a big stop. Inside. Two minutes to play. Australia by four. Neither team can afford to foul here. Ingles, Mills, the do it all man. He rushes to the hurry, but it will count. Count the two. Paddy Mills into the fans, and the fans are loving it back. What a cut, what a pass. The Boomers have doubled the amount of assists of Team USA. They've done it by committee. Unselfish basketball. And have a look at that. Paddy Mills puts it on the glass. Too late. Count it. I love the emotion. He senses the moment, and he's come up huge. 27 for Mills, including 10 in this quarter. Donovan Mitchell.
needed that, the USA. He adds two, but the margin's still four in favour of Australia. 90 seconds remaining. Bucket here will make it tough for him. Bogut protects the ball from Barnes. Delavadova looking for Mills, beckons him toward the ball from the elbow. Mills. Mitchell draws Bogan out and calmly ices three. We've got a one possession game. You're going to overtime, boys. Nine Mitchell in a row. Going to overtime. Nine in a row for Paddy Mills. And I say you keep milking it, keep going to him. Just Bogan, why not? Mills again. They can't contain him. Almost lost his balance, slapping away at it. Barnes, they almost forced the error. Four on the shot clock. Joe Ingalls needs to get something happening. It's a tough shot. Clock expires in the background. 42 seconds to play. The USA with a chance to tie it. Just took a little too long to get to the point. The little deflections, the bobbling of the hand weren't crisp with it. And with that intense defense by the United States, they weren't able to get one off. Timeout call. 42 seconds on the clock. Australia by three. The USA with possession. It's surprising. I think Aaron Baines is coming in for Andrew Bogut. That surprises me. Me too. Because Bogut has been sensational at both ends of the floor. Well, you're talking sensational. Call your timeouts. When you've got possession of the ball, bring the ball up. You have to wait for a dead play. So it's uh, it's going to challenge Pop. It'll be a different strategy that they'll be working on. And this is, is great rehearsal for them for the World Cup next week as well. We only get two in the last two minutes. Oh, it feels like you've got a dozen in the NBA. It goes of course. Chant of defense goes up around Marble Stadium. 52,000 in the house. A worldwide audience as well. Is Australia about to bring down the USA? Mitchell, eight on the shot clock. Guarded by Mitch Creek. He elevates and it's short. But Tatum got after it. Ball knocked out of court and the USA will get possession. And I actually take that back. I think... Um, Andre Lamarce has done a good thing. He's put five, Pops put five shooters on the floor and perhaps Baines with a little bit more better ability to get out and cover the three-point line. They let it fly. And Eagles has got it. Australia on the edge of the most remarkable win. They need the foul. And they do. Donovan Mitchell gets the foul. He's out of the game. Five on Mitchell. He sits down. We've got ten seconds. A three-point lead. And we got it into the hands of our superstar. The person we want on the line right now with a three-point lead is Paddy Mills. Wow. Mitchell it's... out, 12 points. And this wasn't on the script that the USA had. I don't think it was on the script of anybody. It was on my script. I had him winning by five, 86-81. But uh, I wouldn't have thought that... The United States would it, uh, allow Australia to give up perhaps around that 100-point mark, so they've done it in a lot different fashion. And this man here, Paddy Mills, as the two Australians go in to check out what play Fox running. <laughs> I'm not sure Pop would be that happy about that. Well, he's had some big moments, Paddy Mills, but right now, the way he feels about Australia, his love of his country. I don't know if he's been feeling it as much as he is right now. This is amazing, Casey. This really is amazing. What a statement from the Boomers. What a turnaround game. Well, USA on. rush up the floor. They come up empty. Here it is, folks. This is Australian basketball history. For the first time ever, Australia brings down the number one team in the world, the USA. Well, I believe it, Case. You've got to believe, and when you've got that man on your screen on your side, you're always going to be a chance. Such is the nature of the talent that this country can produce. 53-1 and one in exhibition games, the United States before tonight. We'll chalk up number two for the United States.
for the first time in 13 years, the United States are beaten. The men's team are down by four points against Australia. And this was a result. It's going to show.